everyone, and welcome back again to another Audio Tools Explained. I hope you guys are ready for more audio repair because I got another one for you. Today we're going to be going through declipping. No, I did not say declicking again. That was two weeks ago. This week we're going to be doing declipping with a P. Clipping. This is another audio repair tool that I'm going to be demonstrating today from Isotope. There are, of course, as always, other options out there, whether they be free or paid. I have the Isotope one available, so that is what we are going to be demonstrating today. So this is the D-Clip plugin that I have up on screen here. This is a great tool if you've recorded some audio, either for a song or a game, project, what have you, that has some clipping on it that you just want to repair and get out of the way before you actually go in and start building your sound effect, building your music, adding the audio into your project, whatever you're doing. This is also amazing if you don't have time to go back and re-record that audio that's clipping or recreate this sample that's clipping and you just need to rebuild this waveform really quick so that you can get on with your project, get on with creating amazing stuff again. What does the declipper do and what is clipping? Let's answer these questions first before we get into using this plugin. So clipping is when you have a waveform and the sound exceeds the limit that that hardware or software that's running that audio can do. Basically what ends up happening, and I'll show you uh, visually here, is you have the top and the bottom of this waveform just get cut off completely. It's like you had a mountain, you had this beautiful waveform, and somebody just took a straight razor to it and just right across. And what ends up happening is you end up with this really unpleasant sound in a lot of cases. You end up with clipping distortion. It ends up damaging your audio. In a lot of cases, it doesn't really sound pleasant if it is something that you were looking to avoid. Now, in a lot of cases, clipping can be pleasant. Soft clipping, such as that done in distortion, or transient control and transient modification, such as that done in compression and limiting, which is similar to clipping, but not quite, is actually really useful when you're mixing and mastering because it helps you control transients, it helps you control volume and dynamics, and it helps you bring things together when you're doing your mix and master. However, these forms don't usually end up damaging your audio in ways that you would need to go back and repair. At most, you might end up compressing something too much or limiting something too much, which all you need to do is go back, turn the knob back, listen to it again, and adjust. However, when you have hardware clipping, such as uh, in the samples I've recorded in here, where it's just shaving everything off, that kind of clipping is not usually pleasant, which is why we want to run it through this declipping software and use the audio in its best form after we've repaired it. As always, let's take a look at the controls real quick. Just like two weeks ago, not really a lot of controls to look at. Similar to a limiter, we have a threshold control here. This is a very interesting one because we actually have a visual display here that will show you where clipping has been done on your audio. And you can actually just set the threshold to where that clipping is done, which I'll show you in just a minute after we finish with the controls. It also has a post limiter option so that you can actually run the audio through a limiter afterwards, which I think is kind of ironic because you're running something through a declipper just to limit it and crush that waveform again. This post limiter actually helps prevent clipping ha from happening again in your audio by forcing your audio to stay below that zero dB threshold for your software, for your DAW, which keeps it from clipping, keeps everything nice and tidy for you. It actually tells you how many clips it's prevented from happening as well, similar to what the D-Clicker did, which we went through a couple weeks ago. It also has this makeup gain option here in the middle, which is most effective when it's actually used similarly to that of the makeup gain of a compressor. And by that, I mean you use it to make sure that the input signal is the same volume as the output signal using this makeup gain. Up here, you can see it has a quality dropdown uh, option menu. Now, these are just the three different types of declipping qualities it has, low, medium, and high. It's pretty self-explanatory. Low is the lowest setting you can go on. It doesn't use as much CPU, and it doesn't have as much latency, whereas high uses a lot more CPU, has a lot more latency, but does a much higher quality job. And then medium's kind of like the happy middle. All right, that's really all there is for controls. So let's look at some of these examples I recorded in. Uh, I have a really, really hard clipped sample, which you can see here, and a sample with less clipping, 
which you can see here. Let's listen to one with less clipping first. I have the gain set very high on this to get an example of audio clipping. We're going to be using this audio to see how we can declip our audio after it has been clipped due to large amounts of gain or other circumstances. As you can hear, it's got a kind of rattle to it or this kind of distortion effect that the clipping's putting on on top of it, which is more prevalent when it hits these places where it flattens out, such as this section here. We can declip our audio. That really isn't something that's pleasant necessarily, and if you're just recording dialogue for something like an audiobook or dialogue for a game character and you can't get the voice actor back in the studio, you gotta come up with a solution. So you use this plugin here. Let's play the audio back again for some of these clipping sections and look at the threshold here and look at that visual display. You'll see kind of where that volume level is set and where that clipping level is set. To get an example of audio clipping, we're going to be using this audio to see how we can declip our audio after it has been clipped due to large amounts of gain or other circumstances. So you can see it was kind of going out between 16 to 12 there. So we're just gonna adjust the threshold accordingly. Now you want the threshold to come down below where it's clipping at so that it can see and be triggered by the audio where it's clipping. So let's play it back and adjust the threshold accordingly as we go through. To get an example of audio clipping, we're going to be using this audio to see how we can declip our audio after it has been clipped due to large amounts of gain or other circumstances. We're going to be using this audio to see how we can declip our audio after it has been clipped due to. So a great way to actually see the improvement as you put the declipper on is to actually just bounce the audio back out again and see the improvements that you've made. This is one of the best ways to visually see what the declipper is doing. So I have this set up to record out to this audio set, uh, channel here. Let's just record it out and see what we get. I have the gain set very high on this to get an example of audio clipping. So we've bounced some of it down and see what that declipper actually did. So if you compare the waveforms, you can actually see they have a much different shape to them. Especially this one here, you can see it has this sort of flattened out peak here and flattened out here, but down here, it's more detailed, it's more rigid, it doesn't have that same distortion that we heard before as well when we played it back. And you can see this as we move further on. Let's go back to the other example we saw where it was really, really clipping, which was right around here. Let's record this back and see the difference. How we can declip our audio. Look at this, look at how much of a difference that made. Look at how flat this sample is and this part of the sample is and how much more detailed these sections are. These are sort of the small things that you are looking for when you're looking at building high quality sounds. You want the samples to just sound better and have that higher quality, which is why if you can't record it right off the bat, you can sometimes fix it or all the times fix it with these audio restoration tools. Going forward, let's look at an extreme example. This is one where I really cranked the mic gain up. This is a secondary example with even more gain and even more clipping. That is a lot of audio clipping. We can hear it so prevalently, that heavy distortion that's going on. Now, this one we might not be able to repair all the way, but using the proper settings, we can definitely get it to sound a lot more usable. And we might also be able to layer these declippers to get it even to sound perfect. We are gonna experiment a little here and see what we can do. So first of all, we listen back and we pay attention to where this is, uh, to where the audio comes in on our threshold. And we adjust the threshold accordingly. This is a secondary example with even more gain and even more clipping. 
This is a secondary example with even more. So as you can see, I kind of took them and layered them a little bit at the end after I got that sort of threshold nailed in there after I'd gotten it to where I thought it would sound the best. Let's do what we did before. We'll record it out onto this track below and see what it looks like. This is a secondary example with even more gain and even more clipping. As we can see, there's already a huge difference. It's not quite optimal because the clipping and distortion that was on was just so heavy, but we can see some key differences here where sounds got louder, some of the waveform shapes can uh, returned to it and brought back some of that original quality that we were looking for. The distortion is not quite as heavy when we listen to it. This is a secondary example with even more gain and even... Now, of course, this example is super over the top. If you ever have a distortion this bad from clipping in your audio, you only really have one option, which is to go back and re-record or recreate. However, if you have clipping like we had in our original, which is more realistic, where the mic gain is just set a bit too high, using something like this can really save you time, effort, and money and rather than going back and recreating it and re-recording your samples. Well, that's it for this week's lesson, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all found some use in this and I hope you all are finding it a lot easier to repair your audio now. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you next week, next Wednesday, for part two of our sort of orchestration breakdown. So enjoy the rest of your week and goodbye.